Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online.
Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. 
The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College.
Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree. to go against the Antoine and the scout team, the uh, scout team running that. The scary shit, the scary shit. And that dude hit so hard, he already knocked three guys out. I wasn't even a running back, I was a tight end. I had to go scout team running back because we ran out of running backs. I can hear myself still. Uh, Testing, yeah. Is Audi? Oh my gosh, I'm so loud. Yeah, I'm loud as hell. What is going on? Test, test. Okay, I'm gonna turn. I think these are our. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I just turned you down. Okay, I can hear you. Uh, I think we might be good. I'm gonna turn them. Uh, no, I can't hear you now. Well, I'll turn down the main because it was super hot. Testing, testing, still quiet. Testing, testing, okay. testing, testing, testing. You're good. Testing. Am I good? <sighs> yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. We good? Are we good? Okay, that's fine. It's fine. All right. Let's get this thing underway. Happy football. My hot coffee is no cold. Sad. If we are, we haven't done it yet. So, if we are, we need to do it like now. Toes are cold. Thank you. 
just go ahead and start, guys. Yeah, and we'll start at 11. Uh, toes are cold. Everything's cold. My toes are cold. At this time, we ask everyone to rise and remove your caps during the plane. Good afternoon and welcome to Fulton, Missouri here at Blue Jay Stadium as it is a frigid, frigid day out here right around 30 degrees with a 15 mile per hour wind. But we do have football for you on this Saturday. Aaron Mosher with Hunter Mulholland with you today and you know, last game of the regular season, last game for these seniors. They were getting honored earlier today and now they get to take the field for one last time. Yeah, they do. And I know that everybody on that sideline should want to win this game, send these seniors off on a high note in this season with some, with some bright notes to look forward to next year, as young as this team is. But understand that play, play for these seniors and leave everything out on the field for them. The Crown Polars in their white uniforms getting set to kick off right to left as the Westminster Blue Jays sitting in at 1-8 and eight and 1-4 and four in UMAC play getting set to receive the kickoff. Shelby Pitts and Barger and Elijah Teal back to receive. Kicking off for Crown is Michael Downs, a sophomore out of Santan Valley, Arizona. Ball is on the 35 yard line. It's on its tee. And Michael Downs runs in on it. And we are underway from Fulton, Missouri. It's a short kick return at the 30 yard line and run down the left hash and brought down at the 44 yard line inside a pile of Blue Jays and Polars. That was Aaron Hurt, the sophomore wide receiver. And Westminster takes the field, coming off of a 10 to seven loss to Martin Luther where they just could not muster up enough to defeat them last week. But they did get their first win of the season the week before against Finlandia after a good running day from Jordan Kern and two touchdowns by Dante Billups. Peyton Biley still the starting quarterback here this season, and they are in the I formation. We've seen a lot with the two wide receivers and two tight ends. Jordan Kern, the running back, Kendall Outlaw, the fullback, right at the 42-yard line. The handoff right up the middle to Jordan Kern. Make that Dante Billups getting the first handoff of the day. And it's a good pickup on first down across midfield to the 49-yard line. Right on the Blue Jay logo will bring up a second down and four to go. You're going to see a lot of that today, as cold as it, as it is and as windy as it is. You're going to have to keep the football on the ground. Right there in the middle of the field. Back to that I formation. The Polars packing the box. About half, more than half the defense right there in tough. Second down and three for the 49. Handoff down the hash. Running behind his blockers is Billups, and he's met, gets pushed forward, and he got the first down. The near side judge is giving him the first down right around the 45-yard line into Polar's territory. Westminster in their powder blue home uniforms. 
And they've got a first down here to start the day. This is a Westminster Blue Jay team last year that ran for over 465 yards against the Polars. Taylor Dobbins, who is no longer with the team, had 308 yards and five touchdowns. So anywhere in that territory, looking forward to a good running day for the Blue Jays. This is a Polars defense that is not too stout. They're sixth in the conference in opponent rushing yards per game. They allow over 210. Peyton Barley drops back on first down, looks near side, down the field for Clap Saddle. He comes back and can't make the catch at the 10-yard line. He dropped it as he was working against Logan Disabella, the sophomore, and Clap Saddle, the senior, could have had a big grab there downfield. It was a good ball by Byerly. Clap Saddle did have to come back to it, but he couldn't make the grab. Had to move a little bit around that defender, get on the inside of him, closer to the middle of the field, but still, that's a catch we gotta have. Brings up second down and 10 from the 45. You have to imagine that the cold temperature is affecting the football and the hands of the wide receivers. We'll see how often they go to that pass. The Polars like to pass on offense, so we'll get to see that when they take the field. Byerly in the I formation, hands off to Billups, trying to go off right tackle. He was met in the backfield, but drove through Banks, eventually brought down by Kreiner right around the 42-yard line. A three-yard pickup brings up a third down and seven. Westminster driving left to right in Polar's territory with 12.59 left to go in the first quarter of play. Still no score here in Fulton, Missouri. The Polars two and seven on the season two and three in UMAC play. That'll give them fourth in the standings. Westminster at sixth in the standings, right above Finlandia. Clapsell, the wide receiver on the near side, back to that I formation with Virtue the tight end. Clap, make that a handoff to Billups up the middle. It was a delay handoff, and he picks up a good gain on third down. Brings up a fourth down and three from the 38-yard line on the middle of the field. They are going to keep the offense out on the field and go for this. A lot of aggression here from the Blue Jays early on. Oh, why not? You, you set up the fourth down by running on third down. It was a good play. Almost brought down the backfield, but Billups had enough speed to evade the defender in the backfield. Same eye formation all this drive. Fourth down and three to go from the 38-yard line. Byerly under center, drops back and then hands it off. Billups up the middle, I don't think he got it. He's about a yard short. That's where they mark him as he drove into the pile. And Westminster after a promising start is stopped and it's a turnover. And we'll see the Crown Polar's offense take the field. This is a potent passing attack led by Diego Norizo. He has nine touchdowns on the year to 13 interceptions, a 55% completion percentage, over 1,500 yards. As they go to four wide receivers to start the day, Narizo in the pistol, the running back Josh Wallace behind him. Warner and Ansville, the wide receivers to the near side on the 36-yard line on the left hash. Wallace in motion, Narizo drops back, looks near side, finds Ansfield, he catches the 45, runs past the 50 into Blue Jays territory. And steps out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Westminster. There's nobody on him. There, there was nobody within five yards of him. He was wide open. I don't know if there's some miscommunication or, you know, with this young group of guys out, out in the secondary for the Blue Jays, if maybe some inexperience is setting in here early. Good pickup on first down at the 45 near hash. Hand off Josh Wallace up the middle, and he has met for a little to no gain. Might have gotten two. This is a depleted Westminster defense. No Devin Miller today, no Logan Blicken, no Cam Offerman, no Dawson Brandt, no David Fenton. So, like you said, a ton of inexperience. Garrett Berger is having to play linebacker today. As at the shotgun, second down and eight is Narizo from the 43-yard line. A Blue Jay yeah. jumped off sides. It was Justin Scales. It's a very late flag. Late flag. Normally, the referees let that go if they don't snap it in time to draw the offsides penalty. A discussion now as, in my opinion, you would just take back the flag because Scales got back for the Polar snapped it. This is a Polar's team that was predicted to finish fifth in the UMAC, so they're currently outpacing that, but they have lost 
their last two games. Here comes the call. How about that, a surprising result, a false start on the Polars, didn't get to see that's the left tackle. Egwin, the junior out of St. Paul. Move back the Polars five yards, second down and 13 from the 48, 10, 29 left to go in the first quarter, no score from Fulton. Polars with their first offensive possession after the Westminster possession stalled in Polars territory. Back to the 48-yard line, middle of the field, in the shotgun. Narizo drops back, looks over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to find Rouse. It was intercepted. Intercepted by Colin Carter. He's into Polar's territory. He's brought down at the 41-yard line. It was thrown down the middle and into congestion. Narizo has thrown a lot of interceptions this year. Kylan Carter, the linebacker out of Memphis, is the beneficiary of that errant throw. I thought it hit the ground, but it did not. Carter makes the interception and brings it into Polar's territory. It was tipped right into his hands, and that's beautiful execution of the tip drill. It's just let grab that football, and then now there's some flags. There's some dirty laundry here. After as on the return, there was might have been a block in the back or something. Might have been some chiviness between the two teams. Here comes the call. That's a surprising result out of that play. I think we're waiting on the call here. Blindside block on the Blue Jays on that return, but they do keep the football after the turnover. Diego Norizo throws his 14th interception of the season for the Polars. Carter with his first interception as a Blue Jay. And so the Blue Jays, after the penalty, are brought back into their own territory at the 42-yard line on the right hash. Jordan Kern into the game for the first time today. Blue Jays go to the shotgun set. Chandler Taylor, wide receiver, here to the near side. Motion man is Aiden Campbell. Wiley takes a snap, handoff. Jordan Kern, some miscommunication with the handoff. Kern hangs on to it, but he's met in the backfield for a loss. Mark him down at the 40-yard line, a two-yard loss. Brings up a second down and 12. Seemed to be a miscommunication on the snap as whether or not Wiley was supposed to hand that off to Kern or not. And that confusion allowed, allowed the Polar's D-line to get into the backfield and get a TFL. 9.33 left to go in the first quarter. Still no score here, the second offensive possession for the Blue Jays. Again, very, very cold day as some snow flurries are coming down here at Blue Jay Stadium. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver, alone to the near side in the shotgun, moving left to right are the Blue Jays. Second down and 12 from the 40. Barley takes the snap, looks left, finds his receiver, Campbell, Campbell on the screen. He rushes ahead and then is met at the 40, make that the 46 yard line. About a six yard pickup on second down. That brings up a third down and about six or seven. Brings it, make it a third down and six. Line to gain is in Polar's territory at the 48 yard line. Blue Jays break the snap. Back to that shotgun with Jordan Kern to the right of Byerly. Light crowd here in the cold temperatures. Biley takes the snap on third down and six. Looks far side for Chandler Taylor. He makes the grab over the shoulder to the 20, and the flag comes out very late as he definitely pushed off against the Polar's defender, Isaac Dozer. Yeah, you can see that the whole way. Taylor pushed off right around the 40-yard line in Polar's territory. It was a good ball by Byerly, but that's going to be pass interference on Chandler Taylor. Yeah, it pushed off very clearly, and that that ball's gonna that ball was probably caught no matter what. It was in a spot where only Taylor was gonna be able to get it. You know, work on keeping your hands to yourself as an offensive player, then you're gonna be able to get away, not have to make those push offs to make those plays and cause instead of being at the twenty with a first down, you're all the way back at your um, very 35, 30. 
very thematic of uh, this Blue Jays football season. Get a good play and shoot yourself in the foot in the process. That penalty brings them back for a very, very long third down. They're all the way back to the 31 yard line in their own territory. That yard to gain is still at the 48 across midfield. Third down and 21 from the left hash. And the shotgun is Byerly. Eight minutes left to go in the first quarter. No score from Fulton. Byerly takes the snap, looks over the middle, is flush in the pocket, gets out, scrambles to the 30, and he gets to the 35, down the near side, far sideline, and then is brought down by Kreiner at the 41-yard line. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage just about. That brings up a fourth down and 11. Seems as though the punting unit's gonna come out. You get Pitts and Barger back there to punt. <laughs> Pitts and Barger to do everything this year with Dawson Brandt out who had 61 punts this season. That's most in the conference. But he is out today, and so Pitts and Barger gets the job. Kreiner and Malek Fulston back to return for Crown. The snap and then the – no, it's a – oh, well, Pitts and Barger ran. He acted like he was going to run, but he gets the punt away, bounces at the 30-yard line into Polar's territory at the 19-yard line is where it is down by the Westminster coverage team. Pitts and Barger just trying to get some extra yards before he kicked that football away. Probably just trying to get out. Maybe he didn't feel uh, fully confident in his shield. Didn't want to block a punt. Just flushed out and got it off. So the crown offense takes over again after the Diego Norizo interception on their last drive. 6.44 left to go in the first quarter. No score here in Fulton. Norizo in the shotgun. Ansfield lined up against Robert Anthony, one of the few remaining secondary starters. He has three interceptions this season. Josh Wallace, the, wide, the running back to the right of, of Narizo. Narizo takes the snap, hands it off to Wallace. Wallace tries to bounce outside towards the near side, gets outside to the 25, and it is met and pushed out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Dylan Farrell and Shelby Pitsenbarger. Mark him down at the 28-yard line. That brings up a second down in two for the Polars. Narizo still in the shotgun. Crown is first in the conference in passing yards per game. Narizo takes a snap, looks far side on the swing pass to Wallace. He runs outside of the 30-yard line, picks up the first down, and is brought down at the 32-yard line. Oh, no, they stop the clock. First down for Crown. On the far side hash, first down. Whistle's blowing as we finally start the play clock again. Narizo in the shotgun with Wallace to the left. Ansville, the wide receiver to the near side. Ten on the play clock. Motion from the wide receiver and then throw to him. No, it's incomplete. And then he was hit after the incompletion. Terry Warner was the motion man and the wide receiver. I mean, Flag comes out after the late hit by Thomas Valentine. Uh, that was Robert Anthony that made that hit. That was Robert Anthony with the hit. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah. No, that was he, – he was jumping the route and – you know, gave him a hit. He was already about to hit him when this happened, and now I think they're going to – I want to wonder if they're going to try and call a targeting and eject him for the rest of the game. It was certainly a flagger, and I would think maybe like unsportsmanlike conduct or unnecessary roughness. <laughs> unnecessary roughness is the call. So not a targeting, not going to be done for – that would be a very disappointing end to his career, and I know he would be frustrated with that. So glad to see that that was not a targeting penalty. But it is still frustrating to see that because you force an incompletion against this crown team that throws the ball pretty well. And, you know, you make a silly mistake, or maybe that – maybe up here in the booth, 
We well, don't see what it looks like down there, but down there it could have looked like an instant away, and it wasn't not necessary roughness. That penalty moves Crown to the 47-yard line, still in their own territory on the far side hash, moving right to left. 5.42 left to go in the first quarter. No score here at Blue Jay Stadium. Rizzo in the shotgun, whistles blow again. Might be having some issues with the game clock or the referees have come running over here to the booth. Clock resets to 5.45 as some direction from the referee here for our clock management. First down and 10 from the far side, 47 yard line, far side hash. Ansfield and Robert Marible, the wide receivers to the near side, handoff, Josh Wallace up the middle and he has a gashing run inside Westminster territory, trip him up at the 36 yard line into Westminster territory, a big time run for Josh Wallace. First down as they hurry up to the line. In the middle of the field. Wallace with 264 rushing yards this season. Narizo in the shotgun. And we have more whistles blown. Some issues with the chain gang on the far sideline and this is slowing down the crown drive right now. Clock starts again with 5.10 left to go in the first quarter. Rizzo in the shotgun with Josh Wallace offset to his right. Ansfield, the wide receiver, alone to the near side with Robert Anthony lined up against him. Warner Marible and Dimitri Money, the wide receiver, is to the far side. Wallace in motion to the far side. They throw it to him on the swing pass to the 40 to the 35 down the far side line. And he gets towards the first down marker. Penalty flag is out. He got close to the first down, but a penalty flag came out before he got there. And this penalty is going to go against Crown. Holding on the Polars, brings back that run by Wallace. Penalty pushes them back as they spot the ball at the 46 yard line. On the far side hash, brings up a first down and 20 yards to go for a crown. Rizzo empty, and he's alone in the shotgun. Wallace lining up outside as a wide receiver on the far side. Rizzo takes the snap, looks near side, fires to his left, and it, nobody home. Incomplete some miscommunication between him and Ansfield as the ball falls to the ground at about the 25-yard line. Bring up a second down and 20 yards to go. With 425 left to go in this slow moving first quarter. Still with no score between Westminster and Crown. He threw that right into the middle of three Westminster defenders. There was Valentine, Anthony, and Farrell all within the vicinity of that football. Very easily could have been the second interception for him this game. Wallace back to the left of Narizo. Narizo in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks near side, swings it out to Wallace, the 50-yard line, he rushes to the 45, has a good block by Ansville, tripped up by Robert Anthony at the 42-yard line. Good pickup on second down, brings up a third down for the Westminster Blue Jays defense. It was a short pickup for Crown, third down and 16 to go from the left hash. Michael Downs checks into the game as a wide receiver 
for Josh Wallace. No running backs on the field now. Narizo alone. Terry Warner and Ansfield, the wide receivers to the, oh, to the near side. Third down and 16 for Crown. Narizo takes the snap, looks near side, flush out of the pocket, throws it to Warner, and he makes the grab at the 30-yard line and gets out of bounds, which brings up a much more manageable fourth down attempt if you want to go for it. Maybe a fourth down and five. This Crown team has not attempted a single field goal this year. So don't imagine them taking one at any point today. Offense stays on the field for this fourth down and five from the 30 yard line. Near side hash with Narizo, the freshman, empty in the backfield out of San Antonio, Texas. He takes the snap and looks near side, looking for Warner, pump fakes, and then finds Warner over the middle of the field at the 20 yard line. Makes a man miss, rushes to the, towards the far side, cuts back down the hash, and then is met at the 10 yard line, tripped up. But a fourth down conversion works for Crown this time. And they are knocking on the door against this Westminster defense. Big play by the Polars there. Picking up that fourth and short and being able to get inside the red zone now. And that was a huge play for that young Westminster defense to try and, and stop the Polars from moving down the field and get that ball back with their offense. Josh Wallace is now getting ready to receive the snap as the Wildcat running back. Narizo is off the field, first down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Far side hash, 2.30 left to go in the first quarter. Wallace takes a snap, rushes to his left, has some blocks in front, and then is tripped up after a short game. Mark him down at the eight-yard line, maybe a three-yard pickup for Wallace. Crown looking for the first score of the day as we're still scoreless from Fulton between Westminster and Crown. Terry Warner with that big pickup on fourth down and five. He is the favorite target of Narizo. 709 yards receiving and eight touchdowns for Warner this year. Still in the wildcat with Wallace. Getting ready to take a snap. He takes it, fakes the handoff, and then takes it himself. Off left hash, tripped up, but gets into the end zone after staying up on his feet. And Crown is up six to nothing on Westminster. Touchdown, number 32, Josh Wallace for Crown. That is the third rushing touchdown of the season for Josh Wallace out of Corvallis, Montana. Transfer from Indiana Wesleyan. Crown will not be attempting the extra point. They are going for two. Wallace still in that Wildcat look. Jonathan Wamsley, the wing back to the left offset of the offensive line. Wallace takes a snap, flushed out to his right, looking to pass. And then he makes a completion, but Warner did not get into the end zone. And so the two-point conversion is no good for Crown as Warner made the grab at the one-yard line. And our score with 147 left to go in this first quarter. Crown six, Westminster nothing. Crown returns to the field to kick us off after they score the touchdown off of the run by Josh Wallace out of the Wildcat look. Michael Downs getting set to kick us off again with 147 left to go in the first quarter. They lead Westminster six to nothing in this frigid day right around 30 degrees with 15 mile per hour winds here in Fulton, Missouri. It's a short squib kick, and it's caught by Ben Wallace. Wallace makes the catch at the 46-yard line. So Westminster gets more good field position 
with their offense returning to the field. It was a very short squib kick by Michael Downs. So Westminster takes over at the 46 yard line after two possessions of offense. A turnover on down. And they have just been unable to get too much success and then a punt on their last drive. On the far side, Hash at the 46 yard line. Dante Billups as the running back. Line up to the left of Byerly in the shotgun. Chandler Taylor and Elijah Teal, the wide receivers to the near side. Taylor lined up against Devon Boutin, the freshman out of Mobile. Teal in motion, left, right to left. Byerly takes the snap, looks left. And then is rushed out of the pocket towards the near side. Tries to find Taylor, makes the catch at the 45-yard line, and is tripped up. He lost the football, but he was already down at the 42. Got to say that Byerly has been making some pretty good throws today. He has. In this wind, I was not expecting it. In this weather in general, just cold and windy with a little bit of snow, snow drizzle coming here and there. Was not expecting a lot of pass, but we've seen more pass from the Blue Jays than I was expecting today. Chandler Taylor gets the first down for Westminster to the 42-yard line into Crown Territory. On the near side, Hash as Westminster goes back to the I formation with Outlaw the fullback and Billups the running back. Under a minute to play in the first quarter. Crown leading Westminster 6-0. Byerly under center takes the snap. Penalties blow before the play can truly get started. Timeout taken by the Blue Jays. We'll take a timeout with them with 49 and a half seconds remaining in the first quarter from Fulton, Missouri. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Westminster's offense returns to the field. They have a first down at the 42-yard line in Crown Territory. 49 and a half seconds remaining to play in the first quarter. Aaron Moser with Hunter Mulholland with you today. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver to the near side. Matched up against Donovan Cochran. Byerly under center with Billups running back. Byerly takes a snap, drops back, has pressure in his face, looks far side, makes the catch, is Virtue at the 40 yard line, rushes ahead to the 45, brings one tackle that is met out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Great catch by Kelton Virtue, the tight end who has had a pretty good season all around. That's his ninth reception. He's over 100 yards receiving on the year. The freshman tight end out of Camdenton. Looked like there was some chirping back and forth there at the end of the play. Like number 81 Chandler Taylor was chirping with uh, some of the defensive backs on on the uh, crown team. At the 29 yard line, Westminster hurries to the line of scrimmage at the 29 yard line. Far side hash, back to the I formation. 10 seconds remain in the first quarter. Byerly lines up under center, takes a snap, hands it off to Billups, off right tackle, and is met in the backfield, drives ahead, and is met by a bunch of pullers and driven back. They give him forward progress, back to the line of scrimmage at the 29. So that'll end the first quarter with Crown leading Westminster, six to nothing from Fulton, Missouri. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, 
they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. Back to a frigid Fulton, Missouri we go. We start the second quarter with Crown leading Westminster six to nothing. The Blue Jays have the football. The Blue Jays of Westminster with Byerly in the shotgun at the 29 yard line in Polar's territory. Moving right to left, they're on the right hash. Billups the running back to the left of Byerly. Teal the motion man, the wide receiver from left to right. Byerly takes a snap, looks over the middle, looks downfield. Looking for open Taylor. Taylor makes the grab at the five into the end zone. Touchdown, Westminster. Oh, my goodness, but there's a penalty flag out right around the line of scrimmage. This would uh, be par for the course if this is a holding. Holding on Westminster. And a frustrating year continues. A beautiful ball from Peyton Byerly, Chandler Taylor into the end zone. All comes back after the holding penalty on the Westminster offensive line. Just incredible stuff. Unhappy Blue Jay faithful. Those that have showed up today in these temperatures and this weather. That penalty moves Westminster back to the 39 yard line, still in crown territory. Second down and 20 to go. Byerly has been playing pretty well at quarterback today and the offensive line has given him time, but a couple of penalties have hurt the Blue Jays. Byerly in the shotgun at the 39 yard line. Far side hash takes the snap. Looks to his right, flush out of the pocket to his left. Gets away from one defender, running for his life back to the 40 yard line and pushed out of bounds by Donovan Cochran, who has some words for him on the Polar sideline here on the near side. He got right back to around the line of scrimmage on that scramble. They give him one yard to the 38, so that brings up a third down and 19 for Westminster. 14.33 left to go in this second quarter. Third down and long for Westminster. Thirteen seconds left on the play clock and finally Westminster breaks the snap as they hustle to the line in the eye formation. Dante Billups the running back. Byerly takes a snap, drops back to pass, looks over the middle for Kellen Virtue, makes the grab at the 15-yard line, and then is brought down by a pair of parlors. Mark him down at the 16-yard line. What a ball by Peyton Byerly as a late penalty comes out. As It's going to be on a, a crown polar. Noah Urea, the sophomore, was in the backfield. 
as he might have done something after the play as that was a late penalty flag unless they're going to move Westminster back for something else. So after the play, so Westminster does get the first down off the reception of Kelton Virtue, but that penalty actually goes against Eli Shaw, the senior out of Mesquite, Texas. So after the big play in the big game to Kelton Virtue, Westminster, who surprisingly has had a passing game today, that's actually been pretty effectual. Penalties continue to drive them back after these good plays. 31-yard line, first down and 10 for Westminster on the left hash. In the I formation with Billups running back, Kendall Outlaw, the fullback. Still having problems with the game clock and play clock. And as we finally get set again, Byerly under center. Takes the snap, rolls to his right hand off. Dante Billups on the stretch play, off right tackle and down the right hash. And he is brought down at the 26 yard line. Billups is hurt after getting tripped up, holding that right knee. And that would be a devastating injury to him as the trainers are out to look at him. And we'll take a break as they look at him. Dante Billups is helped to the sideline, and unfortunately for him, the sophomore who had three touchdowns coming into today likely just had his season ended in this last game of the regular season. 13-29 left to go in the first half here in the second quarter. Crown Polar's leading the Westminster Blue Jays 6-0. Westminster with the football. Jordan Kern back into the game. Offset left of Byerly in the shotgun. At the 27 yard line, second down, and about six to go. Byerly takes a snap, looks to his left, looks over the middle, fires for Chandler Taylor, and it's over his head. As there was some contact between him, and finally a flag comes out. <laughs> I am seeing some of the latest flags come out on plays. There was some contact on Taylor downfield. It, it seemed as though there was, it was a defensive pass interference way before that they threw that flag. They've been throwing flags late today. You see, they'll let the play finish, and then all of a sudden, here comes this flag 10 seconds later when everybody's getting ready for the next play. Malek Folston was the one with coverage on Chandler Taylor, and we'll see if that penalty is ultimately on him. So that is pass interference on Crown, and in a rare turn of events, Westminster has a penalty that benefits them on this drive. This has been a long day already. Westminster's starting to get the, starting to get something to fall their way. I, Peyton Byerly has been playing very well. He did overthrow Taylor on that opportunity, but the penalty does help them out. And finally, after having the good field position to start this drive, they're into the red zone. At the 13-yard line, 
Moving right to left on the right hash. First down and 10 for Westminster. Byerly in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his left. Byerly takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and then eventually hands it off to the wing back. Then the wing back, Lavelle Whitaker, rushes ahead towards the six yard line, and then it's met by a couple of pollers. Lavelle Whitaker, the sophomore running back out of Kansas City, Kansas. He's the wing back on that play, and after the fake to Jordan Kern, he got it off of the motion. Picks up about five, second down and five from the eight yard line. With 12.34 left to go in this second quarter. Westminster looking to pick up a touchdown on this drive. In the I formation, Jordan Kern the running back. Chandler Taylor the wide receiver alone to the near side. Six on the play clock. The crowns jumped but that was because of a jump from the Westminster Blue Jays. Ethan Talor, the senior, making his last start of his career, will get charged for that false start. A lot of changes to this Westminster offensive line after some injuries. Christopher Williams getting a start at center. Sam Wynn getting the start at left guard. Eli Shaw started the year as a center and is now over to left tackle because of an injury to his right hand and snapped the football right now. Hand off to Jordan Kern up the middle and he's met quickly on second down. As that penalty just brought them back for a second down and 10, but now it's third down. They give Kern about a two yard pickup or make that right around another four or five yard pickup. Third down from the eight yard line. Byerly under center, hands it off to Kern. Up the middle, gets through the line. Could have had some space towards the end zone, but then it is eventually met to bring up a fourth down and four. They still can't pick up a first down before it becomes goal to go. So this is a fourth down and one at the middle of the field in Polish territory. Timeout taken by Westminster. Or make that timeout crown. We'll take a break and come back with Westminster looking to get in the end zone. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. We return to action with Westminster having the football fourth down and one from the four yard line. They can get a first down before goal to go as they're driving on crown, trailing six to nothing. Byerly getting ready under center in the I formation. Jordan Kern the running back, Kelton Virtue the tight end offset to the left of the offensive line. Byerly, Hutt takes a snap, hands it off to Kern, off left tackle, breaks the tackle, fumbles it into the end zone. Ball is collected by Taylor Taylor in the end zone. And there's a flag. <laughs> there's a penalty flag down. Are you kidding me? The most Westminster Blue Jay play of 2022. You can't draw it up any better looked, than what you just saw. Looked really, really good. Got that left tackle. Gets into the end zone. Loses the football. Taylor <laughs> finds a way to pick it up, and then we see yellow laundry set down on the field. I mean, this oh, my goodness. Frustration. Is you could not write a tragedy or a comedy any better than what we've witnessed this year. I've never seen that before. But in good news, the ambulance did show up on time today, so we that didn't is, have to wait for the start of this true. game on that. 
we'll see if we get an index card out to measure a first down today. We've also seen that this year. Let's see. See what this call is. Chop block. Chop on block Oakland. on Westminster. So, of course, that penalty will be accepted to Should decline the touchdown. Here we go. Byerly coming out with Shockley from the sideline. So, move the football back. Still fourth down. Move them back to the 19-yard line. Again, they can still pick up the first down before a goal to go. But it's still a long way to go to get that first down. Fourth down and about 16 or 17 to go. Middle of the field, moving right to left, is Westminster. With the football, 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Trailing crown, 6 to nothing. Cole Yancey into the game as the running back. Byerly in the I formation. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver, near the near side. Byerly takes a snap, drops back, looks over the middle, pressured, gets the ball away. It flutters. Virtue back to make the grab. And he is short of the first down. Unless they give it to him, and they don't. The most comedic drive you will ever witness with your own two eyes. Somehow Kellen Virtue got back to that football after the fluttering throw of Byerly. But after all of that, it is still a turnover on downs for Westminster. Two touchdowns taken away by penalties by that Blue Jay offense. And both of them were on the offensive line. One holding, one chop block. You gotta, at some point, you got to figure out what's going on there. Get rid of the frustration. Diego Norizo and Crown retake the field with their offense in their own territory, backed up at the four-yard line on the far side hash. With 10.26 left to go in the first half, leading six to nothing as the referees have some conversation with the head coach of Crown, Anthony Franz, in his second season. 3-16 and 16 through his tenure as he was on staff at Trinity International University before from 2016 through 2020. Bringing in this fast-paced passing offense for Crown led by Diego Norizo. He's alone, emptying the shotgun. Josh Wallace moves into his left as the running back. Norizo, handoff, Josh Wallace tries to run it up the middle, but he's met by the Westminster defensive line. Garrett Berger finishes it off. Nothing much as Marcus Stevens was also in there for the stop for Westminster. Brings up second down. They give him two yards on forward progress. So second down and eight to go from the six yard line. Still in that middle of the field. Norizo and Wallace still in the backfield in the shotgun. Wallace offset left of Norizo. Crown moving left to right here at Blue Jay Stadium. Motion from Terry Warner from right to left. Hand off Josh Wallace, trying to rush off left tackle, and he's met by the Blue Jays. Garrett Berger on the staff along with Kylan Carter and Justin Scales. Maybe give Josh Wallace one yard on second down to bring up a third down and six or seven. On the near side hash. And Westminster come up with a stop with Crown backed up in their own territory. On the seven yard line near side hash, Wallace moves to the right of Norizo in the shotgun. Wallace motions out, Norizo looks near side, completes it to Ansville, he dropped it. And just like that, the Blue Jays are forced a fourth down and can get this football back with plenty of time to drive the field again and Try and get in the end zone without any penalties this time. We'll see about that, but they do get Crown to go into their punt team. Dimitri Money, who is listed as a wide receiver, will do the punting here today. They've gone to several different punters this season trying to find an answer. 
Dimitri Money standing in his own end zone. Pitts and Barger back to receive this punt. It's a low snap. Money barely gets it away. Make that Elijah Teal back to return. It's a low punt. Bounces. It's a short one. And it finally ends up at the 37-yard line where it is finally marked down after a very short punt. And Westminster continues to have incredible field position to start today. 8.50 left to go in this first half. Crown leading Westminster 6 to nothing. Westminster's football as they have it on the near side hash at the 37-yard line. First down for them. Byerly has thrown the ball well today, but it's been penalties that have been crushing blows to Westminster on offense and some drops as well from the wide receivers. I formation with Jordan Kern, the running back. Virtue, the tight end, lined up offset to the right of the offensive line. Taylor, the wide receiver, to the near side. Byerly under center, takes a snap, drops back, faces pressure, tries to rush away from Gabe Banks, can't escape him. He is dropped at the 43-yard line. Gabe Banks picks up his second sack of the season. He has six and a half tackles for loss now. The sophomore out of League City, Texas. So bring up a second down and 15 from the 43-yard line. Chandler Taylor back to the wide receiver, the near side. Same eye formation. Eight in the box, four crown. Barley under center, takes a snap, drops back, looks to the far side, tries to complete to Virtue, but it was deflected and it falls incomplete at the 38 yard line. I understand feeding him as he's been, been producing all game, but maybe not throwing into double coverage. Dimitri for she almost had his third interception of the season. This crown defense has 11 total interceptions this year, but you're exactly right. A dangerous pass by Byerly. It's just not a smart throw. You had Clap Settle running a streak, and you had and you had Chandler Taylor as well running, running a very successful route. Could have gone somewhere else. Instead, he tried to feed, horse feed Virtue and ended up now at third and long. Third down and 16. Taylor and Teal, the wide receiver, the near side. Byerly takes a snap in the shotgun. Rolls to his left, looking downfield, tries to find Taylor on the near side. He makes the grab, but they say he was out of bounds. He couldn't get his feet in. So here comes the Westminster punt unit. And Shelly Pitsenbarger trying to fill in for Dawson Brandt today. With 7.44 left to go in this first half. Malek Fulston back to receive for Crown, standing at the nine yard line. Fourth down and 16, here comes the punt from Pitts and Barger, high snap, gets the punt away, high end over end, it's a short one, bounces at the 20 yard line and into the Crown red zone and then is finally marked down at the 12 yard line. Here comes the Crown offense again after going three and out on their last possession that they were backed up and they're backed up again on their own 12 yard line leading six to nothing over Westminster with 7.42 left to go in the first half. Norizo and Wallace in the shotgun. Wallace to the right of Norizo. Belt high snap taken, fake handoff. Norizo tries to find Ansfield to the near side and the ball falls incomplete at the 15 yard line. Blue Jays secondary has been reading the short routes very, very well today. You have to credit them. They have played pretty well with how depleted the defense is. Can't fault them for the one touchdown on a very, very long drive where they they let up some key, key plays. But other than that. Second down and 10 from the 12. Norizo hands it off to Wallace. Wallace off left tackle into the boundary and then is brought down outside after maybe a two-yard pickup. 
maybe a three yard pickup to the 15 yard line to bring up a third down. A third down in six or seven. Timeout on the field. As we have a substitution injury for Josh Wallace as he has helped off the field. Chris Nye, the running back, checks in. He's lined up to the right of Norizo. Keegan Bond filling in for Westminster as the cornerback on the far side. Colton Sheehan, the strong safety today. Third down and seven from the 15. Far side hash. Norizo in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Looks near side. Looks to his left. Fire in the air. Almost intercepted. A count by Ansfield at the 36-yard line. He is met by Robert Anthony and then brought down. He was able to high punt that football. Terry Warner. Standing in at six foot three, 205, able to make that catch over Robert Anthony, who was in position to make that interception. Tipped it right to him. Anthony just comes down with that clean lead. There's nothing the crown can do about it. But instead, he tips it up and he's able to come down with the football and with it, with the big gain for the Polars. On first down from the 36, handoff, Chris Nye, and he is driven back. A big time stop by Garrett Berger in the backfield. But they give him a generous spot on forward progress. I don't even think he got to that point with forward progress, but they give him a yard. I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage. That is unbelievably generous. Second down and eight as they gave him the 39-yard line. In the middle of the field, Josh Wallace returns as the running back. Line up to the right of Norizo. Warner and Ansville, the wide receivers to the near side. Three down lineman for Westminster. Nariso takes the snap, rolls to his right, fires to Warner, makes the catch on the near side, and is met out of bounds by Shelby Pitsenbarger. Mark him down at the 46 yard line to bring up a third down and one for Crown. Third down and one with 427 left to go in the second quarter. Crown leading six to nothing. Moving left to right in their own territory at the 46. Narizo takes the shotgun snap. Handoff. Josh Wallace up the middle. Bounces. Tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. Some disagreements, but they do give him the first down. As he fell forward at the end and just barely gets the first down at the 48-yard line. The chain gang is slow to move. There's some disagreements here between the near side judge and the far side judge. And finally, we move the chains. Narizo in the shotgun. Chris Nye returns as the wider, as the running back to the right of Narizo. In the shotgun, Narizo takes the belt tie snap, looks near side, intercepted by Robert Anthony at the 45, into crown territory. He has a chance to run this back, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Westminster. Late penalty flags on the return. As there is a crown puller down on the field. I don't know what that penalty is going to be for. I mean, that's horrible. Robert Anthony almost had another pick six today, but this is like coming a, back. It looked like a clean block. He was looking at him. I don't I don't understand that. 62 is looking, staring directly at Berger when this play happens, and then just lays on the ground and gets the penalties called. That I mean that's horrible, horrible calling by the UMAC refs here. I mean it's horrible. And there's nothing else I can say about it. If it was to happen for four crown again and against Westminster in the same what in the same facet, I would say the same thing. That is horrible, horrible refereeing by this crew today. So it seems like an impossible task for Westminster to score a touchdown today, though they've gotten into the end zone three times now. Penalties have brought all three of those back. Uh, that one's the most egregious. Hor bad call that we've seen today 
it he was staring right at him when he got blocked. I watched the entire play. First down from the 39-yard line for the Westminster offense. 424 left to go in the first half. They trail crown 6-0. Byerly in the shotgun. Ben Wallace, the wing back to the left of the offensive line. Jordan Kern, the running back behind Byerly. He gets the handoff. Barely hangs on to it. Drives ahead off the left hash. Still driving and is finally driven back by Gabe Banks. They give him forward progress to the 36-yard line. In crown territory, moving right to left. Brings up second down. Second down and seven for Westminster. Byerly in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his right. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver alone to the near side. Barley takes a snap, drops back. It was a low one. Rolls to his right. Trying to find somebody downfield. Stays with it. Gets away from Gabe Banks to the 435. And then rushes out of bounds off of the scramble. Mark him out at the 34-yard line. Brings up a third down. A third down and five for Westminster. Here's another big spot for the Blue Jays. Another third down that they've got to pick up. Or are you in are you in four down territory here? As they've shown that they had been today. Back to the I formation. Jordan Kern the running back. Byerly under center from the 34 yard line. Third down and five for Westminster. Far side hash. Byerly takes a snap handoff. Jordan Kern up the middle. And he is met quickly after a two yard pickup to bring up a fourth down and three for Westminster. A crown polar is shaken up on the play. As we'll have a timeout as they look at him. That is the linebacker, Luke Johnson, and we'll take a break as they look at him. Luke Johnson able to get off by himself with 2.54 left to play in the first half. Westminster with the football, fourth down and three at the 32-yard line. Far side hash in the eye formation with Byerly under center. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver, alone to the near side. Crown leading Westminster, six to nothing. Big time, fourth down and three. Westminster takes a snap, Byerly handoff. Jordan Kern up the middle. And he has the first down on fourth down. A fourth down conversion for the Blue Jays. They came in today at 35% on fourth down. That's sixth in the conference. Mark down Kern at the 28 yard line. First down and 10 in the middle of the field. Kelton Virtue, the tight end offset to the right of the offensive line. Barley takes a snap, hands it off to Kern, up the middle. Met quickly, driving ahead, getting pushed by his own offensive lineman. Mark him down at the 26-25 yard line. Joshua Johnson trying to push Jordan Kern ahead. Mark him down at the 26 yard line. Now a minute 45 left to play in the first half. Second down and eight for Westminster. Javen Shockley now the wide receiver alone to the near side. Byerly under center in the I formation. Takes a snap, drops back, 
Looks to his far side. Looks for the end zone for Chandler Taylor. The ball falls incomplete over the head of Taylor. And the two pullers in coverage. Bring up a third down and eight as Byerly going for it all. Third down and eight from the 26 yard line here in this cold Blue Jay Stadium with snow flurries falling down. At the 26 yard line, Byerly in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his left. Teal and Clapsell, the wide receivers to the near side. Byerly takes a snap, drops back, looks over the middle, finally gets pressured, ball gets free. And they rule that an incompletion as he moved his arm forward. Good pressure from the Crown defensive front. Defensive lineman hit his arm off of the pressure. So bring up a fourth down and eight with a minute 10 left to play in the first half. Huge fourth down here. Pick this up going to halftime. At, tied at six if you can get in the end zone here in the next minute and 10. Byerly in the shotgun with Kern to his left. Byerly takes a snap, drops back. Looks to his left, pressured, and then is dropped in the backfield, combined for the sack. Milishit Greer, one of the first ones there. They'll get credit partially for that sack with Dimitri Forshi. And with a minute left in the first half, Crown gets the football back. Barley was dropped at the 35 yard line. Crown in their own territory. Narizo alone in the shotgun. Isaiah Ansfield, the wide receiver, the near side. Josh Wallace finally runs onto the field, offset to the left of Narizo as the play clock restarts. Narizo takes a snap, handoff. Josh Wallace. Has some plenty of space, moves to the sideline, the 40, 45, and then is pushed out of bounds by Colton Sheehan. The penalty flag comes out for a late hit on Sheehan. Look a little helmet to helmet there. I wonder what they're gonna call. Sheehan pushed him out. Wallace ran out at about the 50 yard line and then Sheehan pushed him. Unnecessary roughness on Sheehan. I don't know about that. And that penalty moves Crown to the 42 yard line on the right hash with Wallace offset right of Narizo. 53 seconds left to go in the first half. Crown in Westminster territory. Narizo takes the snap, handoff. Josh Wallace up the middle, tries to get away from Marcus Stevens, but can't as Stevens slings him down at the 34 yard line. Three yard gain, brings up a second down and seven for Crown. Timeout. Timeout taken by Crown. I believe they have one more timeout in this half. Yeah, oh, they're either gonna use it here um, after this next play, or they're gonna, they've never, they haven't kicked a field goal all season long, so I don't expect them to use it more. I expect them to use it closer to the end of the half to get one last play and they're going to reset the game clock to 42 seconds as we wait for both teams to return to the field. Middle of the field at the 35. Second down and eight for Crown. Narizo back alone in the shotgun. Ansfield and Warner, the wide receivers to the near side. Still three down linemen for Westminster. Warner comes in motion right to left. Lines up to the right of Narizo. Narizo takes the snap. 
Looks to his right, fires to Warner out of the backfield, and Warner heard footsteps. Shelby Pinson Barger in on the coverage, and Warner dropped the football at 35. So, third down for Crown. Third down and eight. 38 seconds left to go in this first half from a frigid Fulton, Missouri. Same formation, Rizzo empty in the backfield. He takes the belt high snap, looks near side, looking for Ansfield, completes it to the 28. Ansfield trying to get away from Pitts and Barger, but steps out of bounds at the 28 yard line. They give him the 27, right near the first down marker. Big fourth down. Still here. fourth down though, fourth down and very short. We have had issues with placing the football and clock management. It's all out on a weird day here, Fulton, Missouri. I thought that he was out at the 28, but they gave him another yard. And they do give him the first down. Not that it most likely matters too much. 32 and a half seconds left for Crown, leading six to nothing over Westminster, moving left to right. They had not moved it yet. Welty's making his case on the on the far sideline. Well, I would be hot if I was him too. The near side judge did most likely have a better perspective than both me and Welty, but and he has the ultimate call. First down and ten. Narizo empty in the backfield. Five wide receivers for the Polars. Aptly named out of Minnesota. Snap taken by Narizo. Looks near side, incomplete. Pitts and Barger got his hands on at the 20 yard line as Narizo looking for Warner. Pitts and Barger obviously frustrated with himself as he lays there for a second. Slams his hands on the ground, knowing that he could have had an interception and maybe taking it all away. There were, there's not a lot of people back to stop him from getting away. 27.7 seconds remain in the first half. Marizo alone in the shotgun. 27 yard line is where the crown polars sit. Warner motions back to the backfield to the left of Narizo. He motions. Outside, Narizo looks for him in the flats towards the left boundary, and Thomas Valentine comes up to make the tackle. Mark Warner down at the 17-yard line, and Crown burns their last time out of the half. 14 seconds left here. Probably going to see one to two shots to the end zone, um, or you're going to see quick out routes for two plays to get them within with one shot to go to get down there. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. 17 seconds left to go in the first half. 27 yard line in Westminster territory is where Crown sits, leading six to nothing. Third down and five to go for Crown. Narizo alone in the shotgun. Takes the belt high snap, looks far side. Finds a Warner, it's complete. On the out route, out route, he makes the grab and is pushed hard out of bounds by Thomas Valentine. Or make that Keegan Vaughn. I don't know if he caught that. He did not, they're saying no They're saying no catch. Incomplete. It, it, it he looked, didn't complete the play. Yeah. It, it looked like he, when he got hit by Vaughn, he dropped the football and I don't think he got a foot down to uh, complete, a, complete a catch. Some energy coming out from the Blue Jays sideline, trying to fire up the defense with fourth down and six to go for Crown on the 
Far side hash at the 22 yard line. 12 seconds to go in this long first half. Wallace to the left of Narizo in the shotgun. Belt tie snap, Narizo looks near side. Flush out of the pocket, tries to get away from Scales and he's dropped, dropped by Justin Scales. And that ends the first half of play. Some positive things going forward for Westminster. Justin Scales on senior day, picks up his fourth and a half sack of the season, his fifth and a half TFL. Great end of the half for Justin Scales out of St. Louis, Missouri, dragging down. Some great fire to light under the Blue Jays going into, into the next half. Obviously, we've got 5.6 seconds here, but one could expect a run play and head into the locker room. So, I think everybody is looking forward to maybe getting some heat in the locker room. Yeah. As it appears that Biley may take a, a knee here to end the first half. Yeah, it looks like that is the plan for the Blue Jays. What a first half of opportunities for the Blue Jays. They had a lot of good things going and unfortunately penalties bone crushing to them today. Two, two, definitely two scores that were, or scored chances that got taken away. Three, 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 three times that they scored a touchdown and got taken away because of a penalty. Um, two of those happened on the same drive. So, you know, it could be a, it could be a completely different game as of right now. But we'll take a halftime break and come back with the second half from Fulton.
Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more.
The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College.
financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders, and now we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable. And if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting-edge technologies that will prepare you for a career in whichever sector of digital media that you're comfortable. You won't just hear about digital media, you'll experience it yourself. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP Board's learning outcomes. Here at Westminster, you can also pursue a dual degree in financial planning and finance to further your career. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. 
You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. Testing. Still good. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Passing. Welcome back to Fulton, Missouri. Snow flurries continue to fall as we are at Blue Jays Stadium in Kent and Judith Mueller Field. 29 degrees. Still with that 15 mile per hour winds and crown leading Westminster six to nothing. Aaron Mosier with Hunter Mulholland with you today through the rest of this regular season finale for these UMAC rivals. Shelby Pitts and Barger getting set to kick us off or correction, that is Peyton Olsen to kick off. Switch up the kicker again. Now with Dawson Brandt out, they've had to go to Pilton Barger for punts. And we are underway in the second half. It's a short kick, bounces at the 30 yard line and collected by Felton. And then he breaks away for one tackle. Fulston is tripped up out of bow at the 35 yard line, tripped up in the boundary. Oh, we got a flag. Uh, at the 30, or at the 42, 48. Mike Folston on that return. Looks like there was some chirping between the Blue Jays and the Polars. Not sure who's going to be called. It looked like it was 33 for the Blue Jays. Kylan Carter was in the mix. Penalty on Westminster on that kickoff. Crowd takes over, leading six to nothing. 14.51 left to go in this third quarter. They are able to move, move the ball at times in that first half, but have just one score out of it. Diego Norizo in the shotgun with Josh Wallace to his left. Hand off Wallace, off right tackle. Inside, spins off one tackle, and then is brought down at his legs and then met as well, trying to stand up and drive forward. He gets into Blue Jay territory at the 47-yard line. Lots of yards after contact there by him. Good to fight by Wallace. Second down and five. 
as the snow flurries continue to fall. By far the coldest game here at home for Westminster this year. Same shotgun set. Narizo takes a snap, handoff Wallace up the middle into the teeth of the defense met by the Blue Jays defensive line. They give him forward progress to the 44 yard line. Third down and two for Crown. Three down lineman for Westminster, Justin Scales, the defensive end who had the sack to end Crown's drive at the end of the half. Rizzo takes the belt tie snap, toss, walls off outside into the boundary of the far side and then brought down by the Blue Jays and on third down, Crown has the first down run to the 36 yard line of Westminster. On the far side hash. Looked very good there from Wallace getting outside to the outside of the tackle. Saw the saw the blitz coming, bounce to the outside and get on the end around to pick up the first down. 36 yard line, first down and ten. Riso takes a snap, looks near side, and it's incomplete. Pass falls incomplete at the 30 yard line. Clock stops at 12.55 in this third quarter. I think everybody is hoping for a faster moving second half in these temperatures. We've seen the plenty of passing game though. Narizo in the shotgun on second down and 10 from the 36 yard line. Belt high snap, drops back, looks to his right, fires near side, Ansville slips! Ball falls incomplete at the 20 yard line. We've seen some mistakes out of Ansville today as he could have had that easy grab, but slipped on the turf, trying to gain his traction. Brings up a third down and 10. From the 36 yard line, Wallace offset to the right of Narizo. Rizzo takes the snap, rolls to his right, quick pass, looking for downs. He makes the grab at 30, breaks a tackle to the 25, spins, stays in bounds, and then reaches forward to the 23-yard line. Michael Downs, a 6'3 sophomore, great run after the catch, and gives Crown the first down to the 19, make that the, make that the 23-yard line. Still not into the red zone yet. First down and 10. Wallace to the left of Narizo in the shotgun. Chest high snap, Narizo looks to his left, has plenty of time, rolls away from pressure, flush to his right and throws an incomplete well over the head of Ansfield. A nice grab by the ref on the sideline towards the end zone as that ball went out of bounds at the five. He had Terry Warner open on the far side. Wide open. There's nobody around him. Thomas Valentine was the closest defender, and he was standing probably at the hash mark while Warner was standing by the numbers. Second down and 10 from the 23 yard line, near side hash. Warner and Ansfield, the wide receivers, the near side. Warner gets set in motion right to left. Rizzo, high snap, taken handoff. Wallace up the right hash, and it is met by a pair of Blue Jays. Pitts and Barger and Justin Scales at the 18 yard line. Brings up a third down. Third down and five from the 18. Wallace to the right of Narizo. Warner set in motion right to left again. Hand off Wallace up the middle. Jukes one, Blue Jay, and then is brought down by Berger right near the first down marker. He gets the first down. Mark him down at the 12. The chain gang's slow to move here. That's a first down. They need to move to keep this crown drive going.
Chang Gang doing the most to slow down Crown on this drive. Narizo in a shotgun, first down from the 14 yard line, middle of the field. Chest high snap and then a penalty flag comes out. Ball start looks like on Crown. Ball start on Philip Mathis. Or make that Patrick Flynn. Patrick Flynn gets the false start. It's a miscommunication. First down and 15 today. from the 18 yard line. It's a miscommunication today by the referees as we try and get set again. 10.55 left to go in the third quarter. Hand off Josh Wallace up the middle, dragging a few Blue Jay defenders. Give him the 12 yard line. Short pickup, second down and eight. In Blue Jays territory, moving left to right. A stack of receivers to the right side. Downs, Ansfield, and Warner all three in a row. Wallace to the left and Arizo snap taken. Handoff Wallace up the middle, has plenty of space. Bounces ahead, runs over Sheehan, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown crown, and they lead 12 to nothing. Stay on the field for a two-point conversion. Don't have a kicker, can't kick. Have not kicked the PAT all year. I've just gone for two. Wallace to the right of Narizo on the left side hash. In the shotgun, Wallace goes in motion. Narizo looks his way, fires, and it's complete to Ansfield towards the back of the end zone. And Crown gets a two-point conversion to go up 14-0 over Westminster. 10.07 left to play in the third quarter. It was a critical drive by Crown after getting stopped at the very end of the quarter, the end of the half in the second. And he stopped in Blue Jay territory, driving the field and getting sacked on fourth down. So Crown gets set to kick it off, leading 14 to nothing. Michael Downs sets down the tee at the 35. They lead 14 to nothing over Westminster. Pitts and Barger and Teal stand back to receive for the Blue Jays. After the touchdown run of Josh Wallace, 10.07 left to play in the third quarter. Downs has it set with the wind to his back. He's got his hand up, kicking left to right. And Crown sends it away, it's a short squibber, and it's taken at the 48 yard line. Maybe an onside attempt, and it's collected by the Blue Jays. As they hold on to it, and they start in Crown territory. Sheehan with the onside recovery there, and then just gets lit up by four or five Crown pullers. But, the Blue Jays now have the football in polar territory. So let's see what this offense can do. A very critical drive here in this beginning of the second half, down two scores. They've had great field position all day. Part of that is probably because of the onside kicks that 
crowd keeps trying to run. On the Blue Jay logo at the 48 yard line, Byerly in the shotgun, Jordan Kern to his left. Byerly pauses, takes the high snap at his helmet, drops back, looks to his left, tries to find Taylor, but it falls incomplete at the 30 yard line. It was well to the left of Taylor. Devon Bateson had the coverage. Byerly has had some good throws today. He's also had, a, for the most part, plenty of time to deliver the football. Second down and 10 from the 48. With 9.57 left to go in the third quarter, and they trail 0 to 14 to crown Westminster's football. High snap again. Byerly drops back, rolls out of pressure, tries to find Chandler Taylor. No, make that Kelton virtue, and the ball falls incomplete. Good coverage on the far side. Virtue's a good young target for Byerly, and we have an injury in the backfield. It's a crown polar down at the 36-yard line. Can't quite see the number on him. We'll take a break as they look at him. Return to Fulton, Luke Johnson able to walk off on his own power for the second time today. Still Westminster's football moving right to left. Third down and 10 from the 48. They're still standing on the Blue Jay logo. Trailing 14 to nothing to crown with 9.47 left to go in the third quarter. Critical third down as Byerly stands in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his right. Takes the low snap, fakes the handoff, looks over the middle, flushed out of the pocket, tries to get escape. And he's going to get dragged down by Militia Greer again. Gabe Banks also in on the pressure, and Byerly is dropped at the 47 yard line. Oh, there's a flag coming out. Across midfield. Also looked like there was a horse collar tackle by. No Icon. penalty flag for the horse collar, but the, likely the, for, for the no. taunting or celebration after. Yes, yes. But it seems like it's down there. And I saw Chan I saw number 81, Chandler Taylor from the Blue Jays run away. We've had, we've had several unnecessary roughness and unsportsmanlike conduct penalties today. It's been chippy out here. Both teams in the last game of the regular season. Both far away from any chance at a conference title. Unable to hear the referee, but. I would assume it was on 81 Chandler Taylor, where the flag was. And. Penalty and flag, yeah, on, on Westminster. Where it was and where I saw Taylor at as the flag came out. He's the only Blue Jay over there. I can only assume it's him. Hits of Archer, who's been filling in for Brant today, gets ready to punt it away from the 32 yard line. Sets his foot into it, a good one, high end over end. Fulton tries to rush towards the far sideline, gets away from one, cuts back into the middle of the field, has some space to the 45, 45, 40, 35, 30. Flag was out well before he got into Blue Jay territory. Brought down to 25. Malek Fulston. And another and flag. Those late penalty flags again. This is a really, really chippy and just penalty filled game. Really messy. Just messy football all around. And I don't know. And it, it, what it makes sense. Both, one team is two and seven. The one across the field is, is one and eight. So. Yeah, everybody's kind of. The season's almost over. It's the last game of the season. And, you know, there's not, there's not a conference title to play for here today. 
as the referees sort it out, we'll take a break. There's a massive scrum there. That's what it looked like. There. Over here, all I saw was Eli Shaw was laying down. I don't know how he was laying down. I don't know how he was going to move. They're taking them to re -punt. That's just a question of their offense. That's yeah. not just Welcome back, back to Fulton, Missouri. Aaron Mosier with Hunter Mulholland with you today. After several penalties that some were accepted, some were declined, Westminster has the football. First and down and 10 from their own 14 yard line, moving right to left after that, the punt and return. There was many penalties and we could hardly hear what the referee had to say as he explained it. Byerly under center in the ace formation. Jordan Kern, the running back, handoff up the middle. Kern has some space, drives ahead and falls forward to the 20 yard line. After that punt return, there was some late action and maybe a, a holding that was declined was on holding. the actual return. It seemed like there was a fumble, that that's how the Blue Jays got the football back. But there was a lot of things that went on during that play and I couldn't tell you exactly how the referees got deduced what had happened. 20 yard line, second down and five for Westminster. Ace formation, I'll make that I formation with Outlaw, the fullback. Fire the under center, hands it off, Kern off left tackle, falls ahead, and is tripped up after a few yards of gain. 8.16 left to go third and short, in the third think, quarter. Third and short, you'd think that the uh, Blue Jays here are gonna Try and just go right over the top and just dive over them. Oh, they're giving them the first down. 
<laughs> what a generous spot. Okay. All right. We've uh, seen at least they're being fair in that. They have given generous spots to both sides today. Correct. They've they've given generous spots on both sides of the football and hey, they're just going to keep this game moving right along and 756 left to go in the third quarter. Crown leading 14 to nothing. Westminster football. First down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Virtue Kelton Virtue run. runs on late. He Lines up offset left of the offensive line. Westminster driving right to left in the I formation. Two tight ends now. Farley under center takes a snap, handoff, Kern off right tackle, breaks through the line, and then is met quickly. Drives ahead. Mark him down at the 29 yard line, four yard gain, second down and six. As the snow flurries fall. At Blue Jay Stadium, 30 degrees and very windy. Uh, Who knows what the wind chill is? Let's take a look. Hunter King lines up past the wide receiver of the near side. I formation with Kern still the running back. Second down and six from the 30 yard line. Oh, just a beautiful nice of the field. 25 degree feels like today. Hand off Kern, off right tackle. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Nice 12 mile an hour winds. It has been tough on everybody here today. Short pickup for Kern brings up a third down. Third down and four. Taylor and Virtue running on with what I assume to be the play. So he He's runs been going back late. to Welty to get those. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver on the near side. Shockley on the far side. Virtue, the tight end to the right of the offensive line. High formation, Byerly under center, takes the snap. Hand off, Colonel stretch play up the middle of the field. And he falls ahead to the 34 yard line. See if they give it, they're gonna give it to him they again. Give him, they give him the first down. Two first downs for Westminster on this drive. We're going to get, uh, stopping the clock, stop the clock. Stop the clock. Clock has to reset after it ran too long. First down for Westminster at the 34 yard line, driving in their own territory, moving right to left in this final game of the regular season. Trying to come back here on Crown, leading four, who Crown is leading 14 to nothing. Six minutes to play in the third quarter. Byerly under center, takes the snap, handoff Kern, off left tackle, down the left hash, bullies over a polar defender and drives to the 40 yard line. Second down and five, a good run on first down from Jordan Kern. The junior out of St. Louis. Over 450 yards on the season now. Who has become the feature back since Taylor Dobbins has departed the program. Again, Taylor Dobbins had three, over 300 yards and five touchdowns against Crown last year, where Westminster beat the Polars 56 to 35. 5-19 left to play in the third quarter. Westminster trailing by 14. Taylor, the wide receiver alone to the near side, defended by Cochran. I formation, Byerly takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, finds Virtue. Virtue makes the grab at the... Shockley. Make that Javen Shockley. He finds him complete on the out route to the far side. Mark him down at the 43, 44-yard line. One yard short. Of the first down, third down and one for the Blue Jays. Javon Shockley, usually a wide receiver, lining up as a tight end in that set. Big third down coming up. Byerly under center, hands it off to Jordan Kern up the middle, falls forward. Just playing bully ball with Jordan Kern up the middle. Rudy Kreiner, the sophomore, in to make that stop first on this team in tackles, 91 tackles coming into today. Second team all UMAC last year. Clock operators having some trouble today. As they reset the 432 and now that the clock gets moving and we're underway again. 
Taylor still the wide receiver on the near side. Byerly handoff, Jordan, Jordan Kern up the middle, running behind his offensive line, falling forward. Ball came out at, at the end, but Christopher Williams, the center, able to fall back on it at the 45-yard line into crown territory. Blue Jays just running up the gut with the uh, with their offensive line and, and Jordan Kern just trying to gain yards. And it's not it's working so far, so why why stop? All Jordan Kern on this drive. And then one completion to Javen Shockley at the 46-yard line. First down. Or make that second down. Second down in three to go. I formation. Byerly takes a snap. Hand on. Oh, he dropped the football. And it's fallen on by a crown polar defender. There's a flag Late coming action out. after the play. Noah Urea able to fall on the football in the backfield. And in a, another Westminster drive stalls. Byerly dropped the football at the 50-yard line. That's the fourth fumble lost by Byerly this season. By the sounds of the Crown sideline, this seems like it's going to be a personal foul on Crown for some sort of late action. So that penalty goes against Crown. That moves them back. 346 left to go in the third quarter. Crown leading 14 to nothing, and they have the football moving left to right. Defense has stopped Crown on multiple occasions today. See if they can see if that Blue Jay defense, as young as it is, can, can get another stop and get the offense the ball back after a frustrating fumble. Arizo handoff, Josh Wallace off the tackle, gets away from Berger, but then is met by more Blue Jays still driving forward as after the penalty, Crown was moved back to the 35, and that's where Wallace gets back to. Brings up a second down and 10. No, Wallace has kind of had a nice day today, just being able to run, and when he get, makes contact running through that contact and being able to push for those extra yards. yards and he's, he's very, he's showing up that he can, he can, bullied the Blue Jay defense as well as they can they can get to him. So he's he's put up a put up a nice day today. Rizzo in the shotgun, that stacked receiver look to the near side handoff. Wallace up the middle. Bounces outside towards the sideline on the far side and is pushed out of bounds by Valentine. Oh and there's a flag. Late flag as he ran out of bounds and then it was falling. I don't know if a flag should have came out for that. It seemed like just a natural football play. Yeah, it, this is, I mean, I don't know if this is rough ball as, as much as you want to want to see it. I mean, this is, this is rough ball at its finest. They've been, they've been on, they've been on personal fouls for unnecessary roughness and everything all day long. And they're just looking for anybody to make a mistake, and they'll just they'll call it. They'll call it something that might not even need to be called. So the, this this is uh, one of the most frustrating days for either side of the ball, I believe. It, I just I don't know what to say to him about it. But that's another play where Wallace shows you that he can fight through that, fight through those tackles, and fight through contact. Penalty moves Crown to the 48, swing pass out to Wallace. Wallace has some space, bounces outside. Flag. Multiple flags coming in, three flags. One, two, three, all coming in after that run. Just going to see it all the time, aren't we? Wallace got to the 43-yard line. You know, I hope, uh, If that matters after these flags. really cold. Um, I don't know about you guys down there. I know the refs, <laughs> the refs cannot be liking this, right? Like, they also have to be wanting to, to get out of the cold. That flag came in from very, very far away to be able to call that holding. <laughs> Threw that from probably about the 25-yard line. Penalty moves Crown back to the 43-yard line on the near side hash, leading 14 to nothing with 2.43 left to go in the third quarter over Westminster. Narizo in the shotgun with Wallace to his right. 
Ansfield and Warner in the slot are the wide receivers to the near side. Warner in motion right to left. Snap to Narizo, handoff walls up the middle, bounces, tries to get away from one blue jay, and then is met quickly at the 46 yard line. In their own territory as the wind picks up. Crown going more to the run game on this drive after inconsistency in the th pass game, which they are first in the UMAC in passing yards, so a big change in scheme for them in this weather. Wallace to the right of Narizo on second down from the 46 yard line, second down and 15. Narizo throw to Warner on the far side on the dump to the flat. He is quickly met and brought down by Keegan Vaughn at the 49 yard line. Good play by Vaughn to come up and jump that, even though he, if he jumped that a little bit earlier, he might have been able to get the interception, but to go meet him and keep him behind the sticks, make this a, keep this a long third down for the Polars. On the far side, hash at the 50 yard line, third down and 12 to go. A minute 28 left to go in the third quarter. Crown leads 14 to nothing. Wallace to the right of Narizo. Ansfield and Warner, the receivers stacked to the near side. Snap to Narizo, chest high, looks near side. Finds Ansfield complete to the 40 yard line. Into the 39, he's driven back all the way to the 42 yard line by the Blue Jay defense. Kylan Carter and Robert Anthony met him. See who they get in the spot. They're gonna mark him at the 40. That's short of the first down. Short of the first down by one yard. Here good we throw go. throw by Narizo, a good completion to Warner. Looks like the Blue Jay defense is going to come into a heavy set here as the right tackle, Ethan Talor, is going to run onto the field to come play nose guard. Trying anything, as this could be a run to Wallace up the middle. Fourth down and one from the 40-yard line. It's oh, thrown by it. Narizo, and he falls back on it at the 49. Finally, something goes the way of the Blue Jays, and it's a turnover on downs by the Crown offense with 33.7 left to go in the third quarter. Diego Narizo, the freshman quarterback, had trouble with that football, and Westminster takes over at the 48-yard line. Another stop by the Westminster defense, and now you give it back to the offense. Hopefully that momentum is going to start to change for them here. They can get down the field, get in the end zone, and make – had the defense get another stop for him to make this thing a tight ball game. Near side hash, first down for Westminster. Jordan Kern to the right of Byerly. Teal and Taylor, the wide receivers to the near side. Snap to Byerly, drops back, looks to throw, pressure on him, and he can't escape the rush. Noah Urea sacks him from the near side, drags him down the 42 yard line. Pass rush heating up from Crown after not much from them in the first half. Byerly had about as much time as he wanted for the most part. But this half they've been able to heat up a little bit. As Westminster chooses to allow the time to elapse in the third quarter. And they'll have a second down and 16. Coming back out of the break. We'll be back. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older, and they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you could imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back seven-week sessions, so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online, so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, 
And if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. It's fourth down. Here comes the punting unit for the Blue Jays as they're gonna go back to the punt team. See if there's any extra weird <laughs> on this, <laughs> on this punt. extra weird things that happened today and on this punt as the last time the Blue Jays punted they retained possession of the football. Rudy Kreiner back to receive this punt. Pitts and Barger stands at his 38 yard line. Takes a snap, runs up, and this time he keeps it. He breaks one tackle, drags forward, and he has the first down to the 35, 36 yard line. What How about a, that by Sheldon Pinsenbarger? You had to expect that at some point because he was running up on his punts multiple times. He runs down the far side and Shelby Pitsenbarger with the play of the what game for Westminster. That's a that's a great play. I mean, he showed it earlier in the first punt that he did. He kind of took off and then kicked it away, right? So maybe there's maybe he put it in their mind, hey, he's just rolling out. He's going to kick it, and then he just takes off and goes for it and picks up the first down in a big way for this Blue Jay offense. 35-yard line, far side hash, first down. Byerly takes the snap, drops back, looks for Aiden Campbell, and he makes the grab at the 7-yard line. Aiden Campbell high points the football. What a grab by Aiden Campbell. And finally, Westminster has some positive momentum here with 13.35 left to go in the fourth quarter. First and goal for the Blue Jays, and here we go. Now they're going to go right back to that I formation. They're going to go big and go heavy, play for the bully ball with Jordan Kern. Kelton Virtue, the tight end to the right of the offensive line as they sit at the eight-yard line. First down and goal to go. Byerly under center with Jordan Kern, the running back, and Kendall Outlaw, the fullback, in the I form. Javen Shockley, the wide receiver on the near side. Byerly under center on the right hash. Drops back, looks to his left, finds Chandler Taylor on the end route, stays on his feet, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Westminster. Finally, Chandler no Taylor flags. gets his one. No, no flags, flags on the play. No flags. Touchdown, Westminster. That's a great job by Chandler Taylor to stay tall and stay upright when he catches that ball and in some contact and gets into the end zone. And the Blue Jays are on the board and they're gonna they're gonna send out Rachel Nolte to kick the football. How about that after the conversion on fourth down off the punt fake and the run by Shelby Pitts and Barger? Westminster drives down the field after a beautiful ball by Peyton Byerly to Aiden Campbell. Set them up at the eight yard line. Chandler Taylor stands up strong on that slant route and runs in the end zone for a touchdown. No Dawson Brandt today as he is injured, so backup kicker Nolte gets set to take it. No, Shelby Pitts and Barger takes it himself, throws it into the back of the end zone, and it's oh. incomplete. Virtue at the back of the end zone. There is a flag out. Oh, there's a flag? It looks like it might be P.I., and you might see another chance at this. Why not in the last quarter of the regular season? Pitts and Barger almost made two amazing plays on this drive, the, the two-point conversion and the fake punt. Pass interference on Banks in the back of the end zone. Out comes the offensive unit. It looks like they're going to go right back to bully football. They're going to send out the I formation, the heavy set, as Kendall Outlaw, the fullback, is running out onto the field. And they're going to try and pound this in from the two. So another Sorry, chance, from the one. Another chance to get the two-point conversion. Ethan Talor is in as a second fullback. In this formation, Jordan Kern, the running back. We're Outlawing we're gonna Talor. A, we're going to see a fridge package here. <laughs> Could be a handoff to Talor. Byerly under center with Outlaw and Talor right behind him. Byerly takes a snap, handoff. Kern runs behind the two giant fullbacks, and Jordan Kern has the two-point conversion. What a momentum shift here in Fulton, Missouri as Westminster now trails only 14 to eight to crown 
with 12.55 left to go in this football season. Upcoming is now the most important drive of the game for the Blue Jay defense. They get a stop here on this next on this upcoming drive, and all of a sudden they're a touchdown in the an actual PAT try or another two-point conversion away from taking the lead, potentially stomping Crown's dreams of a of a three-win three season. season. Right. Well, if there is anybody, anybody here today that deserves some good karma in this last quarter, it would be the Westminster Blue Jays. Their season has been frustrating for everybody, and I think that they built up enough good karma to take into next season and really have some bounces go their way because it has been some kind of year for Westminster, but they are still playing. They're still out here trying to finish the season strong. Peyton Olsen has the football lined up for Westminster to cook, kick left to right after the touchdown drive and the pass to Chandler Taylor and the two-point conversion good from Jordan Kern. Good kick. End over end taken by Marabra. He drops it. Ball still on the turf, and he finally gets back on it at the 28-yard line. Robert Mabra, the freshman out of Surprise, Arizona, unable to receive that kick cleanly, and they mark him down at the 29. Here we go. Blue Jay defense. It looks as though they're sending Ethan Talora back out again to be a full, to be a nose tackle on the defensive side of the football. He's a senior playing his last game of the regular season. Diego Norizo in a shotgun with Wallace to his right on the 29 yard line, tossed out to Wallace, swing it out right side, tries to get away from a Blue Jay, drops the football, ball on the turf. Does Westminster have it? Still no signal. Yes, the Blue Jays have the football. Kylan Carter comes out with the football from the pile, and now the Blue Jays are going to have a chance inside Polar territory to go ahead and try and take the lead here. Unbelievable. Second fumble in a row for the crown offense. As the drive before, Narizo dropped it, and there was a turnover on downs. What a turn of events for the Westminster football team. And they have the football on the right, on the left hash at the 30 yard line, driving left to right. 12.42 left to play, and they trail Crown 14 to eight. But they have all the momentum. In the pistol, Byerly fakes the handoff, tries to run it himself, and Banks drags him down. Looked like some confusion there as he might have thought that he was supposed to hand the ball off to Kern, and Kern thought he was just supposed to go up and block for him. They give him a one yard loss, 31. Second down at 11. Claps out of the wide receiver on the near side. Jordan Kern, the running back to the right of Byerly in the shotgun. Left side hash, second down at 11. On the 31, Byerly takes the snap. Rolls and fires to his right. Tries to find Claps out and it's over his head and out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Logan Disabella with the coverage. Looked to be to look to me as there should have been a flag on that. Looks like looked like some contact before the ball was there by the crown defender. Brings up a third down eleven for Westminster. With eleven fifty nine to go. Now the 31 yard line in the middle of the field. Claps out of the wide receiver on the near side. With Aiden Campbell, the wide receiver in the slot. Jordan Kern, the running back to the right of Byerly in the shotgun. Bolt tie snap. Byerly drops back, looks to his left, flushed out of the pocket, rolls to the sideline, tries to look upfield, fires, and it is caught. Did he get a foot down? No. They say Chandler Taylor could not get that right foot down at the 15 yard line. It looked as though, from here, it looked as though he was in, but I, it's hard, hard uh, angle here. Incomplete brings up fourth down and 11.
Tough to see, but Chandler Taylor made a great effort, great effort by Byerly too to stay behind the line of scrimmage and throw that football downfield. Critical fourth down with Westminster trailing by six, 14 to eight. Taylor and Campbell to make that clap settle and Campbell, the wide receiver to the near side. Kern to the right of Barley, takes the snap. Looks over the middle, completes it to Elijah Teal, has some space, runs up the middle of the field, has the first down anymore, to the five, into the end zone, he dives, touchdown Westminster. No flags in the play, and Westminster has taken a 14 to 13 score. Make that a 14 to 14 tie as Elijah Teal took the in route, a completion by Byerly to him all the way to the end zone. Westminster pulling out everything they have in this last quarter of 2022. Elijah Teal, the freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee, out of Whitehaven High School, the sophomore make him, and he's able to run all the way to the end zone. Out comes Rachel Nolte to take the kick to give the Blue Jays the lead. The kick is up, and it's... To the left of the uprights, and so we are tied with 11.37 left to go. Just a shocking turn of events. Here we are. Now we have a 11 minute and 37 second football game. Nothing else. Fresh score, 12 minutes. Who's got it in them? Eleven thirty-seven left to play in 2022. We're tied 14 to 14 between Westminster and Crown. Peyton Olson gets ready to send us off left to right. And he puts his foot into it. It's a little squiver. Bounce at the 35 and into the hands of Mabra at the 25. Make that Folston. He runs up the middle of the field, has plenty of space, and to the 40, to the 30, and he beats the Westminster defense. All the way into the end zone, a kick return touchdown after Westminster just tied the football game. Malek Folston takes it all the way back from the 30 yard line. And that is 2022 in a nutshell for the Westminster Blue Jays. Get something good to go your way and something comes right back at you. So with 11.35, Crown leads 20 to 14. Josh Wallace comes out to take the extra point, so it takes a two point conversion in the Wildcat. Takes it, rolls to his right, looking to throw, stays looking upfield, and it's intercepted. No, just incomplete. Just down. Incomplete. But so the Blue Jays will take that because now they are going to take. I have a six point. I have a six point deficit rather than an eight point deficit, so. Blue Jays can drive the field, get a two-point conversion of their own, or a PAT of their own, and take the lead.
Back to a frigid Fulton, Missouri. Crown takes back the lead 20 to 14 with 11.34 to play after the kickoff return by Malek Folston. Michael Downs gets ready to send us off right to left. Ball teed up at the 35. Puts his foot into it and this time it is a end over end kick to the 30 yard line returnable by Aaron Hurt. Put, runs out of bounds down the far sideline. Mark him out the 42. So the Westminster offense returns, trailing 20 to 14. 11-23 left to play. They've had all the momentum up until that kickoff return. Touchdown drive last time out with a big throw to Aiden Campbell and then a touchdown throw to Chandler Taylor. Peyton Barley in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his right. First down and 10 for the 42 yard line in their own territory. Westminster driving left to right. West Barley takes a snap, drops back, looks down the far sideline, and it's intercepted by Rudy Kreider at the 30 yard line. Flag comes out late to the 40, 45, 50, and he stays on his feet, but uh, this, this, this is play coming is back. Not gonna matter. Uh, that was pass interference on Rudy Kreiner as he dragged down the receiver on the far side. A valiant return from Kreiner all the way back to the 40. Penalty sets up Westminster in crown territory at the 48 yard line. Far side at, far side hash. With 11.06 left to play in 2022. They trail crown 20 to 14. Clap saddle and Aiden Campbell in the slot to the near side. Jordan Kern to the right of Byerly. Byerly points out the rushing defender, takes a snap, hands it off Kern off the middle. And he drags ahead for a one yard pick up to the 47. Head coach of Crown, Anthony Franz, yelling out focus to his defense right now, trying to hold back the Westminster offense that has found a little bit of success here in the fourth quarter. All started with a Shelby Pitsenbarger fake punt where he ran it for a first down. And they got into the end zone on that drive. Second down and eight from the 47 yard line. In the middle of the field, the Blue Jay logo. Byerly in the shotgun takes the chest high snap, drops back, has plenty of time, looks to his right, finds Claps out of the 28, 25, 20, and he is dragged down from behind at the 15 yard line. Claps out of the senior on senior day, makes a big time grab. And Westminster is into the red zone. Devon Bateson makes the tackle, but not before Clapsell gets the 15 yard line. Peyton Byerly has looked his very best today. In the final game of the season, he's really been putting it all together through the air. Been 935. His, been finding his pieces today and virtue and Clap Saddle and Shockley and Chandler Taylor as well. 9.27 left to play. Byerly in the shotgun, Jordan Kern to his right. Taylor and Campbell, the receivers on the near side. Ethan Talor jumped before the snap, falling backwards. And that false start will move Westminster back. Back to the 20 yard line to bring up a first down and 15. We've seen Ethan Talour as a running back, a nose guard, a right tackle today. He has been all over the field. Putting it all on the line on his last game. Westminster trailing 40 to 20 against Crown. Jordan Kern to the right of Byerly in the shotgun. 
Takes a belt high snap, drops back, looks to his right, and can't find Campbell as he slid to the ground. It falls incomplete at the 10, too low of a pass. Brings up a second down and 15. Still here in this cold environment in Fulton, below 30 degrees, with the wind picking up and Campbell and Clapsell, the wide receiver is the near side. Clapsell made the grab, big grab on this drive. Right side hash. Riley takes the belt tie snap. Looks left towards the end zone, looking for Taylor. Taylor makes the grab. He has it on the far side of the end zone. Touchdown, Westminster. We're tied again, this time at 20. What a beautiful ball by Peyton Barley. Chandler Taylor flipped his head around, made the grab. And Westminster having their best offensive performance in the last quarter of the season. Where has this been? I don't know, but it looks like they're going to go for two and try and take a two-point lead. And it looks like they might be doing the same thing they did last time with Talora as the second fullback. Incredible stuff today from Westminster. After just a brutal season and a brutal game for three quarters. They have a chance to take the lead. They are. Ethan Tuller's gonna stay in as a second fullback. Virtue the tight end to the right of the offensive line. Whistle blows before they can start the two point conversion. Flag comes out. Delay, of, Delay game. of game. We have no play clock visual as they're keeping it on the field with the referees. Moves the football back to the eight yard line for this two point conversion. Now you gotta expect how, how something How much does different. this change the plans? Uh, he stay, they're gonna keep the heavy set. John Welty takes a timeout to talk this over. We... <sighs> we'll take a break with him. Just a critical two point conversion coming from Westminster. They're going to keep Talor in the backfield as a fullback. So it doesn't seem like it has changed the plan too much. On the eight yard line, two point conversion. Byerly takes a snap, drops back, rolls to his right, looking downfield. There's only one receiver. It's Virtue in the back of the end zone. He makes the catch. He makes the catch in the back of the end zone. Oh my there was God. one receiver on that play. There was and the 6 5, Kelton Virtue, high points the football over half of the crown defense. And yes. Westminster has taken a 22 to 20 lead yes. with 8.45 to go. Hold on. There's a conversation with the referees. What what is it? There's no there's no laundry possible? on the field, so is it possible? It's, it's good. good. Kelton Virtue. The freshman out of Candenton. And here come the Blue Jays storming back. Down 14 to start their comeback. And now they take a 22-20 lead. And now it's up to their defense to hold them. Last time the defense didn't even get a chance to stop him as the crown as Malek return Holston team. Had the kickoff return 70 yards for a touchdown. Have to see if Peyton Olsen will even kick off to him this time. Rudy, Rudy Kreiner back to receive with Folston standing at the 28. What a day here in Fulton. Ball teed up for Olsen, kicking left to right. Squibber to the 50, rolls, ball on the ground. Is it recovered by Westminster? And they say it's recovered by Crown at the 49-yard line. 
There's a flag coming flag out. Flag coming out. This might be for the short kick. It didn't go. It did go it went, 10 yards. It went 10 yards. It went 10 yards. So. so it's something after the play. There's some chirping. Not quite sure what it is. Head coach of Crown, Anthony France, was saying something was illegal. But the kick definitely did go 10 yards. So there's Cup Welty and his coaching staff are trying to keep the Blue Jays sideline controlled and get them back on the field. I'll take a break as they talk it over. Crown offense returns to the field with 8.43 left to play. Trailing Westminster 22 to 20. They have the ball in their own territory at the 49 yard line. Make that into Westminster territory. Narizo in the shotgun, takes a snap, hands off Wallace, off left tackle, bounces towards the near sideline, runs out of bounds at the 46. Penalty flag late comes out. The Blue Jays defense is signaling that they believe it's on Crown, so it might be, might be a holding here. But we shall see as the referees discuss them. Wallace is going to sub out for Robert Mirabel, and they're going to go to an empty set here. Penalty on Crown moves them back to the 45 yard line. Near side hash, as you mentioned, Narizo empty in the shotgun. Warner in Ansfield, the wide receivers to the near side. Oh. Justin Scales jumps off sides. Give Crown five yards back. They're off their left tack or their right tackle stands still. Waiting for the for the all clear to make sure he doesn't get called for a false start. And we're back to where we started, pretty much. The Blue Jays are they they got something nice for for a change and then they shot themselves in the foot again. First down, eleven from the fifty yard line. Narizo empty. Looks to the sideline with 8.19 left to play. Trailing 22 to 20 to Westminster. Crowd with the football, moving right to left. Belt tie snaps to Narizo, drops back, looks near, near side, completes the Ansfield at the 46, and that's where he's dragged down by Kylan Carter. Mark him down at the 45 into Blue Jay territory. Credit to the Blue Jay fans that have stuck around through this cold as they're imploring their defense to hold on. Narizo takes a snap on second down. Looks far side, gets complete to Downs. Michael Downs dragged down after the first down completion. On that second down and seven play, first down Polars to the 37 yard line. Complete from Narizo to Downs. They hurry back to the line, empty set. From the 37, far side hash. Justin Scales almost jumped off sides again. Mariso stops, looks to the sideline with the clock running. Now 
Narizo takes the chest high snap, looks far sideline, it's incomplete, almost intercepted oh. by Keegan Vaughn. Ball falls incomplete at the 30. That could have been the game right there. The Blue Jays can, we've seen this season, the Blue Jays can definitely not run out seven minutes on the ground. We've watched, the, we watched their opening drive earlier on this year. Where they took 10 minutes off the clock. Clock stops at 7-10. Crown with the football trailing 22 to 20. Second down and 10 from the 37. Rizzo takes a snap, belt high, looks over the middle, incomplete. Great coverage by Shelby Pitsenbarger on Warner. Looking for Warner on that in route at the 40, but that's where the ball was batted down by Pitsenbarger to bring up a third down and 10. Rizzo still alone. In the shotgun. Mabra, the receiver, alone to the near side. Trey Warner in motion right to left. Snap taken, drop back from Narizo. Fires over the middle, complete to Michael Downs at the 20. And he is brought down, first down, Polars. In the middle of the field. Clock still ticking. Rizzo looks to the sideline. Warner and Ansfield, the wide receivers on the near side. Snap taken, thrown to the right side, complete. And Mabra is met. Picked up a few. Garrett Berger, hard hit on Mabra. Bring him down at the 14 yard line as Mabra pops back up. Second down and four. Staying empty in that, in the uh, backfield. Just Narizo back there. Wonder if they think that they've got a shootout going and they can't run the ball. Meanwhile, I would personally, I would want to run the football a little bit, especially in this weather and run down some clock. Don't get this. Snap taken by. Look at this. Narizo, he throws it out of bounds. Miscommunication looking for Ansville. It falls incomplete out of bounds at the eight yard line. I mean, that looked like intentional grounding to me. There is no receiver. All right. And I don't I don't know where, how that's not. He, st he took one step back. He's very clearly inside the tackle box. Clock stops at 545. Crown still trailing 22 to 20. Against Westminster driving right to left in the red zone. <laughs> Big third Three. down here for the Blue Jays. Third down and four, Narizo looks to the sideline. Alone in the shotgun. Talks some things out with his offensive line. Four rushers coming from Westminster. Takes this belt tie snap, fires over the middle. Incomplete looking for Ansfield. Or did he make he the catch? The he catch. did, wow. What a grab by Isaiah Ansfield to hold on to that one. I mean, that was well defended. He tipped it up to himself, and we're getting. And Wallace, Narizo alone in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks near side, finds Wallace on the slant. Matt kicking into the end zone. He's short, one yard short. Good stop there by Dylan Farrell and Sheehan. Coming up, the safety's coming up big, just coming up and laying, laying the boomstick on him, keeping him out of the end zone. Here they go again with the Wildcat at the goal line. Second down and one to go. Wallace getting ready to take the snap. Wamsley and Nye checking into the game for Crown. Wallace takes the snap, runs in, drives ahead, and gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Polars. They take a 26 to 22 lead with 419 left to play. And here go, here come the newly re rejuvenated Blue Jays again. They're gonna, they're gonna come back out onto the field and have one last shot. Polar's trying to get this two point conversion. Only a four point lead right now. A touchdown wins it for the Blue Jays. As long, barring the two point conversion being successful. Right. So this is big for the Polars. Wallace and the Wildcat. 
for the two-point conversion. Rolls to his right, looks upfield, cuts back, tries to get away from two, Lord does. Carter makes the tackle at the legs, finally dragging Wallace down. Rothman Harris comes in at the end to finish him off. Credit the Westminster defense for making that stop for the two-point conversion. So Westminster, who's had a touchdown in their last three offensive possessions, just needs one to take the lead. And here they go again. Four minutes and 19 seconds left, and here we go. The, the finale of the 2022 season and UMAC conference play. And Westminster offense has the football, and they've got to drive the field and, and come out of this one with a win. We have got the chance. And they've been showing that they can do it recently. We saw an onside kick by the Blue Jays last time. Watch. I wonder if the uh, the Polars are looking at potentially running one of those. We've seen a couple from Michael Downs today. 419 left to go. Westminster trails 26 to 22. Crown getting set to kick it off right to left with the wind continuing Only to chill everybody down. There is an onside coming. There's three on one side. Okay, now they're switching it up again. Still a in balance to the left side. I believe an onside should be coming here. Down with his hand up, runs up to the football. And he does get some air under it. And it's returnable at the 30 yard line by Lavelle Whitaker. Runs it up to the 40. And he is met by the coverage team and then it is brought down right there. They give him the 42. That's where Westminster takes over and they have four minutes and eight seconds to try and take this lead. Peyton Byerly has had his best quarter of the season, throwing some really good footballs. Here we are, the finale of the Blue Jays season. And who else to step up and do it but the seniors out here for these Blue Jays, these offensive seniors. Eli Shaw trying to pump up what Westminster crowd remains. Peyton Byerly in the shotgun with Jordan Kern to his right from the 42, takes the snap, drops back, looks over the middle, and it's complete to Aiden Campbell, and he is brought down at the 45-yard line, a short pickup. They give him the 46 to bring up a second down, second down and seven to go. Chandler Taylor and Elijah Teal, the wide receivers to the near side. On the near side, Hash Barley takes the snap, drops back, looks over the middle, and it's intercepted, intercepted by Fulston to the 40. He has the speed, 25-20, and he runs out of bounds. And Peyton Byerly throws his costliest interception of the season. That's his fourth one. Malek Fulston jumped on the route. And you can give, go ahead and give him the MVP of this game after the kickoff return for a touchdown. And game a great, pick. great interception from Malek Fulston. It's a great play by Fulston. I mean, he jumps the route almost immediately. He knows where Byerly's eyes are going. He's reading his eyes, and Byerly has not shown that he can, he can give, he can uh, juke people out with his eyes. So now the Westminster defense is going to have one last hope. They're going to hope for a turnover and get the ball back into the offense's hands or maybe run one back themselves. Robert Anthony does have interception today. Narizo has been interception prone at times today and this season. Anthony had ran that one back too, besides a penalty. Yeah, we can talk about all the opportunities Westminster has had today. 334 left to play. Puller's ball at the 20 yard line. Handoff Wallace up the left hash and through the teeth of the defense. Mark him down at the 15. Polar's leading the Blue Jays 26 to 22. Crown with the football. Narizo looks to the sideline. Isaiah Ansfield, the wide receiver, alone to the near side. Still looking at the sideline, under three minutes to play as they let the clock burn. 
Josh Wallace, the running back to the right of Arizo in the shotgun. 2.50 to go now. Second down and five from the 15 yard line. Chest high snap, handed off to Wallace. He's met in the backfield and he's brought down for a loss, a big six yard loss. Kylan Carter in there, Justin Scales in there, Ethan Talor in there, as well as Rothman Harris. Whistles blowing to try to stop the clock. Seems as though John Welty has taken his timeout. Uh, nobody's made any motion to go to the sideline as they I stay saw, on the field. Saw Welty talking to. Uh, the clock to, is stopped. To, to if it referee. wasn't a timeout, then it should be running. Yeah. And so finally, we get the yeah, signal. There it is. We'll take a break with 2:31 left to go. Thirty-six left to play. Polars have the football. Third down and ten from the twenty-yard line, leading twenty-six to twenty-two over Westminster. Biggest play of the year, and are these next two plays for this Westminster defense? Warner in motion, right to left. Narizo in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to his left, and he loses the football. It's intercepted. It's intercepted by Ethan Talor at the twenty-five-yard <laughs> line. The senior from St. Clair, Missouri, Ethan Talor is going to come away with an interception in the biggest moment of his college career. He has come up huge today. Diego Narizo just put the arm back to throw and the football squeezed out. Then Ethan Talor, Johnny on the spot, makes the interception at the 26-yard line. Here comes the Westminster offense again with 2.29 left to play. Peyton Byerly on the last drive threw an interception to Malek Folston, but Westminster has new life, trailing 26 to 22. At the 26 yard line, first down. On the near side hash, Elijah Teal gets the sweep, right to left, towards the far sideline, to the 30, 35, and out of bounds. Near the line to gain at the 36 yard line. Second down and one. On the far side, Hash with 214 and ticking in this fourth quarter. What a competitive fourth quarter of play it has been. Westminster struggled to score more than two touchdowns all year, and they've already gotten three in this quarter. Oh. Barley in the shotgun. Current to his left, Teal in motion right to left again. They fake the toss to him. Barley drops back, looks near side, finds Taylor at the 42, tries to spin up field and he's pushed out of bounds. Or did he stay inbounds? He stayed inbounds, clock still running. Logan Disabella brought down Taylor on the out route. Barley with a long throw out to the sideline. Timeout taken by Westminster. That's Westminster's last timeout with a minute 40 left to play. Or were they already out of timeouts? It does not seem that they've used the timeout. I think the clock was just running and they were trying to move the chains. And this. And the referees are just trying to get the clock stopped. So, no timeout taken on the field. Clock is stopped at 140 though. First down. No timeout, Near side hash where the football lays. 
First down and 10. Blue Jays in their own territory, moving left to right. With a minute 38 and ticking to go in the fourth quarter. Barley the shotgun, Jordan Kern to his left. Chandler Taylor, the wide receiver, alone to the near side. Barley chest high snap, looks to his left, finds, clap, settle, and he runs ahead to the 45 yard line. He's met by the crowns on the far side hash by the crown pollers. The pollers defense stop him, clock at the 113 mark and elapsing. Byerly in the shotgun with Kern to his right. Teal and Taylor, the wide receiver, is to the near side. At the 45, second down and five. Byerly takes the snap, drops back, looks to the far sideline. Caught by Aiden Campbell. He gets out of bounds at the 49. Stop the clock. 58.1 on the clock. You're going to probably see a lot of those short little out routes, especially to Taylor and Campbell as they're running inside. And then... You're probably going to see Clap Saddle and Teal with their speed get down the field and try and blow the top off. And if that's open, they're going to take it in the West, and the Westminster offense then will walk into the end zone. At the 49 into crown territory, Byerly in the shotgun takes a snap, drops back on first down. It looks to the near side, pump fake, escapes pressure, steps on the pocket, gets hit from behind, and is dropped. He has dropped for a loss at the 48 yard line. Clock still ticking, but timeout taken. Finally, the final timeout from John Welting Westminster. Clock stops at 49.7. We'll take a break and come right back with the last 49 seconds. Westminster's offense returns to the field out of the final timeout. They don't have any more, so they can't stop the clock unless they get out of bounds or get a first down. Second down and 13 after the sack. 49.7 seconds remain with Westminster trailing crown 26 to 22. They need a touchdown on this last drive. Barley in the shotgun, Kern to his right. Low snap, Barley takes it at his feet, drops back, looks near side, looking for Claps. Oh, can't make the catch, it is intercepted by Rudy Kreiner off the tip, pushed out of bounds at the 34 yard line, and that does it. That does it from Fulton off the tip drill. Rudy Kreiner picks up his third interception of the season. Tough finish for Dylan Clapsaddle as he came back for that football and just couldn't make the grab. He's had a few drops today, but he's also had a few big catches as well. And after a long 2022 season, Westminster falls to one and nine and one and five in conference play. Crown finishes their season two and eight, or make that three and seven and three and three in UMAC play. You can only assume that Crown's gonna kneel this one out and that's gonna be it. This is going to be a long off season for John Welty. A lot of decisions to make. We see who returns for Westminster in 2023. It was a brutal season throughout. A, a, a unbelievable effort here in the last quarter. Have to credit the effort that the guys for the Blue Jays that stayed out there and stayed on the team really put in this season because to even go out there and play at times, you have to know that it was difficult. And so credit to the Blue Jays, credit to the Polars this season, credit to them in this game. They get a couple interceptions here in the fourth quarter to seal it out. We thank you for joining us this season. A tough year for Westminster football, but they have some freshman pieces like Chandler Taylor and Kelton Virtue and others to work towards going into next year. Your final score today, 26 to 22, Crown defeats Westminster. And that does it for the 2022 season. It's been Aaron Mosier with Hunter Mulholland with you all season. We thank you for joining us. And we will see you next time here from Westminster University. Westminster College.